Hello, my name is Sam and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you along to the Mastering Git video tutorial series. This series is very much designed for people who already have a good understanding of Git and use it in their daily workflow, but want to take their understanding to the next level. If you're not familiar with Git, or even if you just want to solidify your foundational knowledge, I highly recommend going and taking a look at the beginning Git video series. I'll wait for you here, so you go and do that now and I shall see you in several hours time. For those of you who are still here or who have just jumped back, let's take a look at what we're going to be doing in this course. This is going to be a tour through some of the more advanced features of Git with a focus very much on solving problems that you'll no doubt come across as you use it. We'll start by taking a look at how to resolve merge conflicts. We'll take a look at how you can use rebasing as an alternative to merging, as well as to rewrite history. We'll also take a look at things like the ref log and how you can use filter branch to be able to completely programmatically rewrite your history. Throughout this entire course, you're going to use a single Git repo that you'll be able to download alongside the next video. I highly recommend that you follow through all of the demos and the challenges as we go and keep using that same repo. If you get stuck, you'll be able to download a fresh repo at the beginning of each video. The project inside the repo is a really simple HTML and JavaScript app. It represents the culmination of work for four people, Will, Xanthi, Yasmin and Zach, as they come together to try and build an app for generating magic squares. It's built to represent the kind of workflow that you might see in a team. Each person branching off to build their own little feature, and we're now at the stage where we need to get all of that work back into master to build the completed app. But, I hear you ask, what is a magic square? Good question. And although you don't really need to know, it is maths, and why would you not want to know? A magic square of order n is the integers between 1 and n squared arranged in a square two-dimensional array, such that the sum of each row, the sum of each column, and the sum of each diagonal is equal. In the example here, you can see this is a magic square of order 4. It has the numbers between 1 and 16 arranged, such that the sum of each row, column, and diagonal is 34. As I said, you don't really need to know that, but it might be helpful when we get to the end of the project and you can see what it is that you've managed to build. It's also not really necessary to know JavaScript or HTML. We'll be very much focusing on Git. Speaking of which, before we get going, I think it would be good to have a bit of theory. I'm going to take a high-level review of how Git is implemented in terms of its own little file system. All of the data that Git uses to be able to provide the entire history of your repository is stored in a blob store, which is effectively a key value store, some kind of key that points to a load of data. How does that translate to commits? At a high level, a commit is just a tree. It represents all of the files in your working directory. So for example, this commit here has some files that we've modified, the yellow ones, and the green ones which are left the same. And what Git does when you tell it to commit that is take each file and calculate the SHA-1 hash of its content. It uses that as the key, and the value is a compressed version of the content of the file. The blob store on disk is just a directory structure with files named as the keys, and the contents of those files being whatever you want. This tree here has to make new blobs for the yellow files. The ones that have changed have now got different content, so their hash will be different, i.e. their key will be different, as will their content, the compressed version of that file. The green ones, though, haven't changed, so their keys are the same, and they can point to exactly the same place in the blob store as they did before. At commit time, Git creates all of the items within the tree in the blob store. It then needs to represent this is what the tree looks like for this commit. And to do that, it creates a simple text file that has the keys of the items in the tree. And once again, it puts that in the blob store. It compresses the contents and it finds the hash of it. The hash is the key. The compressed contents of that tree file go in the blob store. The tree isn't everything in a commit, though. A commit also has a reference to its parent. Git then creates a new simple text file that represents the commit itself. It has a reference to the tree, which is a key from the blob store. It has a reference to its parent commit, which is a key in the blob store. It wraps that up 
in a file, finds the hash, uses that as the key, compresses it, that's the value, puts it in the blob store. So now, every aspect of the commit, the files, the tree, and the commit itself, are all in this blob store. And those hashes that you see whenever you're using git, they're just the keys that are used in the blob store, because everything is in the blob store. And that explains why branches are so cheap in git. Because everything is referenced by this key in the blob store, this SHA-1 hash, to choose a different point in the history of the git repo, you just need a different hash. So a branch is just a file with a reference to that SHA-1 hash. When you check that out, git goes and finds that commit. From there, it can find what tree it needs and it reconstitutes that tree in your working directory. It really is quite clever when you think about it. Anyway, that's enough theory. Let's get going with some stuff. First up, we're going to take a look at how to resolve merge conflicts, which I'm sure is something that you've already come across. So let's find out how to do it. I'll catch you then. You should just be able to click the button and go straight on. And I recommend that you do. Cheerio.